Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've uh, got a PC specialist build here, um, which has no post. Uh, and that's not new due to any defect. Uh, client did a CPU upgrade on it, uh, and uh, new CPU is not working. So they've dropped in an, an i5-9600K, and it didn't post. Um, and that is fairly predictable. Presumably the motherboard doesn't support it, or the BIOS doesn't support it, or something like that. Um, however, they've also supplied you with their old i3 in a box here. And apparently when he put his i3 back in, that didn't work either. So we're basically stuck in a no post situation. And uh, we're going to investigate that and see if we can get the new chip working. So there's the old i3. So firstly, I'm going to turn this on and just verify that it does exactly what the customer says. So um, let's plug this in. <clears throat> and already I have concerns about this motherboard. The customer said they did spec it up with the better motherboard, but uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at that motherboard and that's not a better motherboard. It's, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's no nice way of putting that. Let's give you a better view up here. There we go. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll point, well, I can't even see the model of the motherboard, but for starters, when there's no cooling on the VRMs at all, and it's taking a four pin power input, not an eight pin power input, you know you've got a crap motherboard. Um, so yeah, this is not a good motherboard and I'm willing to bet that that's gonna be our problem and probably, uh, I'm probably gonna be wasting my time here. Anyway, let's turn the damn thing on. So power at the back, power at the front. And I'm basically just gonna go, uh, look at that, it doesn't post for me. Nope, that ain't doing anything. So. Okay, power off. Right, let's take some bits out of this and take the uh, take the graphics card out to get it out of the way. Then um, the first thing we're going to do is put the i3 back in it, and we're basically just going to restore this computer back to a working position, a working condition, and then move forward from there. So let's take that out. As I say, having looked at this motherboard now, I don't think we're going to get far. But you, you never know. We might be able to do a BIOS update on it or something like that. At least we've got the old CPU. If we didn't have the old CPU, we'd be bang in trouble. All right, what is that? It's a H310M. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what the 310 is compatible with. It's not a B series, though. I was seriously expecting to find a B series. What graphics card is that? Is that any good? It's a 1060. 1066 gigabyte. Nice graphics card. Um, so yeah, the motherboard is really letting this computer down. That wants a much better board in it. This is where PC specialists will let you down though. They'll use cheap motherboards to bring the cost down. You know, they're good builders, but you'll, you'll end up with a cheap motherboard. Um, I, that doesn't need to come out. That's a waste of time. We're not, we're not pulling this motherboard out quite yet. Um, right, okay, let's, let's get that CPU cooler off. That's not what I wanted to happen. Okay. Right. This cooler is coming off in the most horrifying way possible, but we can fix it. It's okay. All right. Basically, these thumb screws are supposed to come off of those. Are they? I'm not sure, actually. I think these, um, the, I think these um, uh, standoffs are supposed to come off of the cooler and stay on the board to hold the back plate in place. Uh, instead, all of the screws have dropped out of the back plate, which is a pain in the backside. Um, so I'll see. I'll see if I can remove those in a sec. Oh, ow! Oh dear. Okay, I'll show you why I'm cringing big time. Here comes the horrifying close-up. Okay, well, there's your problem. That pin's off, that pin's off, that pin's off, and that pin is off. And that guy looks slightly out of alignment over there as well. 
that's some nasty pin damage. Uh, that's why the i3 didn't work when you put the i3 back in. Um, uh, we're going to take the motherboard out from this. Um, we'll get the motherboard bare on the bench and we'll see if we can salvage those pins. But there's your problem. We've got to sort that out if we're going to, if we're going to have any hope of salvaging this. If we can save those pins and save the motherboard, it probably just needs a BIOS update, and I think this will take the CPU after that. Although I'm concerned about it only having four pin power and like what looks like maybe four phase uh, CPU V core. I don't know if this motherboard has enough grunt for the uh, for the uh, 9600K. We'll check the compatibility list as well. Um, Although to be honest, it's worth trying to save the motherboard anyway because if he buys a new, if he has to buy a new motherboard to use his new CPU, then we may as well try and save this one because then he can sell it with his old CPU. Um, so you know, it's worth trying to save this board. Okay, round one, let's go. So, <clears throat> the first thing I need to do is identify pins that are out and what direction they're supposed to go in. So, the pins on this side of the board are all flowing in this, in, uh, to this side, and the pins here point in that direction. So we've got a guy there, it looks wrong. I'm going to turn the board around to get to that one though. I'm cack handy for that. This guy is only slightly off. I think we can just salvage him straight away. So I'm just going to use Stanley Blade just to pick that up off the board. Very gently flip him over. Oof, we might need to tweezer that one over. Now we want to do as little as we can with these because the pin will just snap. If I bend it too far. Now, if I snap a pin, that doesn't instantly mean game over, because a lot of the pins in this uh, land grid array are power or ground pins. And those power and ground pins, there's a lot of them. So it's less of a disaster if we lose one. There we go. He's back in alignment now. He's laying. He's laying flat. It's not. He's not a. He, that's not 100% straight. But by the time the CPU is sitting down on top of that pin, that should touch the pad. Right. Who's next? This guy in here. Got to get him out of the array without bending the pin adjacent. There we go. That's that guy sorted.
Another one done. All right, this guy is laying flat. I think he's probably okay. I'd feel better if he was standing upright a little bit. I think he got bent flat by uh, the other pin. So I'm just going to stand him up just a tiny bit, just so he's got a bit of spring on him. That was a bit too far. Back a bit. There we go. Okay, right. And now we've just got the guy back here. And then I think that LGA is salvaged. I'm going to turn the board around. Take this ram out to give myself a bit more working space. Single point hold down ram because it's an Asus board. Don't know if I've ever told you guys, but I don't like Asus boards. Not that it's Asus's fault that this LGA got mangled. We got two pins there. I think we do. There we go. I should do it. Now, you can see in the light that the pins I've worked on there, you can see where they're not perfect. You can see that in the in the shine. However, they're good enough. They're all pointing in vaguely the right direction. So when the chip sits down on top of those and crush and presses them all down flat into the socket, they should line up with the pads on the chip. So let's drop the i3 into place. And I think we're all set to give this thing a test run. And I'm just gonna quickly inspect the bottom of the i3. And that looks okay. We don't have a lot of, uh, there's a little bit of smudge marks on there but nothing that's gonna stop the thing from starting. So that'll be all right. All right, let's rig this thing up to test. All right, put the RAM back in. We're plugging in the Antec. I think I should give this Antec power supply a name, you know, like Annie or Big Bertha or, you know, the fat lady, I don't know, something like that. You guys should like comment or whatever. Let's turn the picture over so it's the right way up. What should we call the Antec HCP 1000 watt power supply? Girth. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's all sitting wonky because the power supply is knocking it sideways. Oh, there we go, that'll do. All right, power. And I need a heat sink on the CPU. It's not gonna burn out right away, but you know, it doesn't cost me anything just to plonk a heat sink on top. It's also good because if I plug a fan in, I can see when the thing is powering up and stuff like that. Okay, right, uh, we've got HDMI. Um, I'm gonna take out the SSD there just so it doesn't try and start. How the hell does this locking system work? I gave it a pull, there we go. Let's get you out of there. Okay, uh, cool, let's start. Power. Power button. There we go. PC specialist logo. We have a post. And we have no boot device. And we have BIOS. All right, it lives again. Oh. Okay, so now we've got a working motherboard. Let's have a quick look and see what we're dealing with. 
All right, so in BIOS here, we've got a Prime H310MA BIOS version 0401 with an i3-8350K. Now, I don't know if this board will take the CPU that we want to put in it. So firstly, I'm going to jump onto the Asus website and find out. So let me just bring up the support page for this board. All right, here's the support page for the board that I've just uh, Google searched. So we're on the Asus website and I've gone to CPU and memory support and under the CPU support list, if we scroll down a bit, you can see we've got the i5-9600. So the CPU is supported, which surprises me actually. Personally, I wouldn't run this CPU in this motherboard, but it is supported, so we can do it. And basically I'm gonna tell him, dude, get a new motherboard as soon as you've got some more money again, because your motherboard's not very good. Um, however, we do need BIOS 030803 and we're on 0401, so we need a large BIOS update. So let's hit go. Is that gonna take me, there we go, there's our release BIOS 1601. Hmm. Well, either way, that's, uh, oh, that must be the latest. Okay, fine. And that actually only came out, uh, oh, that's gonna be Feb, I'm guessing. Is that second of the 11th? That, <laughs> I think that's brand new. Anyway, download that. Uh, right, I'm going to stick this onto a flash drive and we'll uh, flash this BIOS. Okay, right, I've got my BIOS update on a flash drive that's FAT32 formatted and I've put the zipped version that I downloaded and the unzipped version on there because sometimes they want the zip and sometimes they want the raw file. So I've put both on there for good measure. Right, so we're probably going to need advanced mode to get to the BIOS update, so let's try that. Uh, tool, Easy Flash 3, that'll do nicely. One of them, please. Right, oh, they've got an internet update. Well, let's go via storage device because I've already got one of those. Uh, there's my flash drive, one of them, please. And it's seen the cap file, so that's the unzipped version. Please back up your BitLocker recovery key and suspend BitLocker. Yeah, that's fine, we don't have any of that. Uh, we don't even have uh, we don't even have the module on the board. So, go ahead. Yes. Do you want to read this file? I do. Okay. Version sixteen oh one. Thank you. Processing. It says in the bottom left behind my face. There we go. So there's our processing line. So I'm gonna let that run. I will see you guys in a moment. Okay, right, it flashed and rebooted, and now it's saying press enter to recover BIOS setting. Uh, press F1 to run setup. Let's do, uh, let's enter setup, I think. I don't wanna recover any previous BIOS settings, we wanna reset all of that. Okay, there we go, so we're now on BIOS version 1601, so our BIOS update landed, it took it nicely. Um, so now we should be able to swap out our CPUs again. So let's turn it off and change out the CPUs. Power supply off. And I'm just gonna... Right, I'm gonna wait for that light to go out before we actually do anything. This power supply, um, the, the five volt rail stays up on this power supply for an ungodly amount of time. It's really annoying. I might just short it and see if we can get it to go on again. Oh, it clicked off anyway. There we go. Right, CPU out. So in comes the 9600K. Such a waste to have a 9600K in this board, but you know, it'll work. Okay, and we've got a cooler perched on top of that. 
Okay, right, let's go. Power to the power supply and turn on. All oh, the monitors lit up. We've got a post. All right. And then I accidentally muted the microphone while changing scenes in OBS. So now we're voiceovering. Uh, right, but as you can see, we now have a Core i5 9600K CPU at 3.7 gigahertz. So the CPU is now being detected completely fine by the motherboard, and we're ready to rebuild this computer. Whoops, I just noticed my microphone was muted. I hope that hasn't been muted for previous stuff. Okay, so before I put this all back into the um, computer, we're gonna refit the cooler. And I'm gonna do that out of the case because it's easier that way. Normally I fit CPU coolers when it's in the computer. Uh, because sometimes, uh, I don't know, it just most of the time it works out better that way. However, because this is quite a skinny cooler, uh, there's nothing stopping me from put, doing it here, and that makes things a lot easier. So firstly, I want to check if these, um, uh, if these studs come off or not. So let's just find out with a pair of pliers. There we go, those do come off. I thought as much. So what happened here was um, someone, either PC specialist or the client, doesn't really matter who, um, they screwed these, uh, they screwed this cooler down as tight as they possibly could, basically, and that's just not necessary. When you're fitting CPU coolers, um, you you, it's this spring here that is doing all the actual hold down work. That spring there, that's your compression spring. All you've got to do is wind it down to the stop and that's it, you don't have to tighten it, you don't have to graunch it up tight. Literally just take it down to the bite point and that compression screw will do all of the work for you. That's all you have to do. It's not a car, it's not gonna get shaken down the road at 100 miles an hour. It doesn't need to be bone achingly tight. All right, let's put the back plate back on. So which way around does this best fit? That looks right to me. So I'm just gonna loose fit all these studs now, just to hand tightness, just to hold everything in place. And then what we will do, I will just bite these up slightly, just to make sure that they stay in place. And then the cooler can be uh, removed without the back plate falling off all the time, which is how it should be on this design. Is that gonna move a little bit further out? Okay, so I've screwed those all into place, so now I'm gonna get my plies and I'm just gonna give them just a bit of a bite. Not a super bite, we don't want to tear traces off the board. Just enough so it's going to be tighter than the um, hold down screws, and that'll do. And those shouldn't come out of their own accord this time. And now uh, I'm going to clean up the thermal paste that we've got here and put some fresh stuff on. So alcohol dampened tissue, nice and shiny. Hmm, not quite, it's very smooth. I'm just seeing some slight discoloration on the bottom of the heat sink and I just want that gone. I want it to be nice and shiny. 
I'm just using my finger just to, uh, so you can see the dirt coming off on my thumb there. So there was still some left there, but it was just a bit ingrained into the metal. So no matter how shiny you think the bottom of your CPU cooler is, it's not quite shiny enough. But don't be deceived by mirror finish coolers. Usually when there's a mirror finish on the cooler, it probably means that there is actually, it's been plated and the plating itself introduces um, a, uh, another thermal interface. So uh, this, is a more, this is more of an honest cooler than one that has a mirror, shine, a mirror finish on the bottom. This is actually, this is the kind of thing that I would want to see, to be honest. And again, another good thing for um, air coolers is look for ones where, as you can see, the heat pipes are directly contacting the chip. That's what you want to see because you want all of the heat from the CPU to be going straight into these heat pipes. You don't want it going into the aluminium block. You want it in these heat pipes. So direct contact like this, that's the way forward. It's one of the reasons why um, Cooler Master's Hypo, uh, uh, sorry, Hypo Evo, I think it was, series has done so well for itself. Very cheap coolers with, that are amazingly capable because of the direct contact. Cool Master didn't invent that, but you know, they brought it to the mainstream, I reckon. Right, get some nice shiny new Arctic MX4 on there. Very good value for money thermal compound this is. MX4 is some of the best stuff you can get, and it's very cheap. It's not the best, however, it's very good for the amount you pay for it. You don't need anything better than this unless you're doing extreme cooling. Right, stick you on top of there, and I'm just going to let that float for a minute while I get the screws lined up. One on each side. And hold along. There we go, right. I've got four screws that are now aligned, so now I'm going to give the whole cooler just a bit of a wiggle to make sure it's seated nicely. And that's got just a little bit of just wiggle back and forth movement. So I know that it's not hung up or caught on anything. And now we're going to evenly push down these screws. So put a couple of turns into there, a couple of turns into there, a couple of turns into there, and so on. And as soon as I hit the bottom of the screws, which I'm doing now, we just stop. I'm not putting in any bite. I'm not doing anything else. Just as soon as I hit the bottom of the screws, I'm just letting the screwdriver just stop. There we go. And that is one happily fitted CPU cooler. So again, as you can see, because of the uh, step in those screws, it's those springs that are doing all of the work here. This is trying to push upwards, but those springs are pushing it downwards. So there. And in terms of the directionality of it, the fan is blowing, fans uh, usually blow toward their label, but this is a reverse bladed fan. So the blades are blowing away from the label into the cooler. So our airflow is in that direction. And that means that this thing is going to blow out toward the back of the computer, where in all probability there's an exhaust fan to exhaust the hot air out of the case. And now finally, we'll just get the, um, the fan cable tucked out the way. Beautiful, very nice. That's ready to go back in the computer. Oh, except for the SSD. Let's chuck that guy in while we're sitting here. Don't know how much I like that um, M2 hold down. That's a it holds it in, but I, uh, I don't know. I don't like the ring pull. That looks a bit naff, but whatever. Cheap board. Okay, let's get this thing refitted. So this is all pretty straightforward from here on out now. I've just got to drop this in and put all the screws back in. And because these tuck cables are all super tidy, which, uh, you know, they're, they're not bad. I don't like having it quite as tight as this as you know zip tied in a rigid position but 
it does make this part of the assembly quite easy, I have to admit. And I would imagine that someone like PC Specialist probably also does this just so they can then ship this computer in the post and not worry about any cables flapping about while it's in transit. There we go. Right, let's hook it all up one more time. Right, and now while we're here, I'm gonna do a quick burn test on this thing, just to make sure that that CPU is running nice and well, uh, at a decent temperature, and also just that this motherboard is actually gonna drive it properly. So I've got Intel burning test here on the left here, and I've got <clears throat> a hardware monitor on the right. So the temperatures we're looking for are these ones here, um, about halfway down on the right. So let's start up burning test and that is gonna start thrashing that CPU. So as you can see, the temperatures are spiking up. That's completely normal behavior. We're happy with anything under, anything under 70, to be honest. As long as it stays under 70, I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, and the other thing I wanna do as well, I'd really love to attach a thermocouple to the VRMs which are these fellas down here. Those are the power supply. The, these are the power regulators to the CPU. However, I cannot find my thermocouple for love nor money. So, um, so yeah, I can't do anything about that. But what I might do, I might just poke my um, infrared thermometer down there, this dude, um, and just see if I can get a read on those. We might get something interesting from that. How are our temperatures doing? Right, so we're hitting mid mid 60s all right and after that's run for an amount of time not that long um, we're looking for 70 degrees on the cpu um, or rather you know the package is looking for 70 degrees which is um you know i didn't really want it to go that high but that's okay um, and that's okay because we're currently under an unrealistic load level at the moment um, games, uh, games and stuff like that will not put this kind of stress on the CPU, um, not this kind of consistent 100% maxed out stress. So that's completely fine. Um, and we've got warm air coming off of the CPU cooler, so the cooler is doing its job. Um, so, you know, warm air coming off your CPU cooler is a good thing. It just shows that it's working. Um, and then in addition to that, the powers look fine and if I get the uh, thermometer onto those VRMs, I can just aim that to actually hit one. Yeah, these things are looking to spike up. We got, you know, it's looking for 70 degrees there. So, like, given a whole day of this, um, that motherboard is going to have a bit of a bad time. Those VRMs have no cooling on them. So they are going to be looking for 70 or 80 degrees, which I'm not too chuffed about. However, again, we're, un we're looking at unrealistic loads here. So if you were going to absolutely thrash this computer day in, day out, that motherboard is not gonna hold up. However, for gaming, where the CPU load levels are just spiking up and down all the time, it'll be okay. So yeah, I wouldn't trust this thing for uh, mission critical, but it'll be all right. Right, we're all done here. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope that was interesting. I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.